Hi, this is Bob Sirico, the Computer Tutor. I'm going to be talking about TCP IP and networking. And one of the questions people ask all the time is what exactly is an IP address? Well, since 1981, I've always tried to use analogies and keep things kind of easy to understand. And I'm going to kind of use an analogy now with you to describe what an IP address is. If we were to look at houses on a street, each house on the street whether it's a blue house, a brown house, a green house, has a unique number. So if this blue house was house number 63, then we would be going to 57th Street and pull up into the driveway of house number 63, or whatever house number. But each house on the street has a unique number. Computers don't have streets. Computers have networks. And each computer on the network has a unique number. Whether this network is your house with multiple computers in your home or at work where there's lots and lots of computers all over the place or going to the Internet, going to places like computer tutors or Microsoft or Google. Any of those places will have a unique IP address to find the location you're going. So let's talk about how these IP addresses look. Street number is pretty obvious. If we live at 57th Street, our house number would be 68. But computers use a thing called an IP address, and this is what an IP address looks like, and they have to be unique for every computer on a network. So the computer would be using four sets of numbers separated by dots. So let's talk about why the dots and why these specific numbers. Here are some sample IP addresses, 192.168.15.5, uh, the third one down, 70.88.10.4, and the last one, 10.0.255.90, are all good IP addresses. They're separated by these dots, but the separation, each of these sections are called octets. And we'll talk more about why they're called octets eight in a minute. When I talk to my students in class at Computer Tutors, I talk to them about a couple of rules. Now these aren't rules that I made up, I just call them my rules. But Rule number one is the numbers must be between 0 and 255. Which numbers? The numbers you use between the dots have to be between 0 and 255. Rule number two, where the dots are located, matter very much. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a few minutes. But you'll see these dots have to be located at specific spots. So why 0 through 255? Let me switch over to my, my whiteboard and I'll show you. I'm going to again write down an IP address and I'll try to show you uh, some things to look at about the numbers. I'm going to write down 192.168.15.3. Now, I mentioned to you earlier, rule number one states that the numbers have to be between 0 and 255. Imagine we have these switches, electrical switches at your house. Now, if you have that many switches on a wall, your electric bill is probably pretty high, but we'll go ahead and just use this as an analogy. These switches, the first switch represents number one, switch number two is two, switch number three is the fourth switch. It represents the number four. So if I'm putting in the number three, the one that's mentioned here, what I would do is turn off that switch, off, off on the 32, off on the 16, off on the 8, off on the 4, and on on the 2 and the 1. 2 and 1, of course, and every day I think is 3. If you turn all the switches off, all of them, then the number that would be represented to the computer, 0, would be all of them off. If you typed in a 255, then the computer would see all of them on. So all the numbers in an IP address have to be between 0 and 255. For example, the number 15 that you see. This number 15 would be represented by the 8, the 4, the 2, and the 1 on, and these off. Every number that you see in an IP address has to be represented by 8 ons and offs, combinations of ons and offs. Now, I'll show you in a later lesson about how to convert these in your head 
and we'll do some really cool tricks about doing this in your head without a calculator or any other special tricks. So if I turn them all off, we're talking about zero. If I turn them all on, it's 255. So any number between zero and 255 are the numbers that we can use in an IP address. Next, we're going to talk about why the dots. Now, there's a lot of technical reasons why the dots are at certain locations, but let's keep it simple. Let's talk about if I was simply writing out these numbers without dots, 192.168.15.3, without putting the dots in there, you would just see a string of numbers. The dots are for us to separate what numbers we're talking about. So the same numbers that I've written here, by putting the dots in different locations, would change the location and the computer. So now we're talking about a computer 19 to 16 using the same numbers, 8153. And if I put the dots in other places, just scattering them in certain locations, now I'm talking about 1.92, again, using the same numbers. So let me give you some more examples about how those dots are very, very important. I like to joke with my students in class sometimes and talk to them about hiring them for a job. And I'll, I'll say to them, um, how's this salary look to you? And I'll write this number on the board. And, and heck, I'd like that salary for myself, but okay. And then after thinking for a few minutes, I'll try to be quiet, which is hard for me to do, but I'll try to be quiet and let them think about it. And somebody will say, wait, 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 are you talking about $150,000? Or are you talking about $150? See, the dot matters very, very much. So wherever you put the dot, this definitely influences the computer's IP address. So if I wrote 192.168.15.3, as I did before in, in the previous example, by me putting the dots at specific locations, I'm talking about a specific IP address. So the dots are important. So when we look at the whole number, 192, it has its own series of eight ons and offs, known as an octet. The 168 has its own series of eight ons and offs. The 15 has its own series, and the 3 has its own series. So in a, a future lesson, I'll be talking to you about doing the subnetting and doing the conversion of binary conversions in your head. But right now, let's uh, switch back over to the whiteboard. My IP address, 192.168.15.3. That's not my IP address, but that is an IP address. And I'm just using that one as an example. By looking at that IP address, you have to tell two things. You have to tell which part of the number is the street that I live on and which part of the number is the house that I live at. So the analogy that we were using before, the street and the house, I have to look at that number and say, do I live at 192.168.15 street and house number three? Now, of course, in computers, we don't call it streets and houses. As I mentioned earlier, we talk about networks. And we call it a host. So computer is known as a host. So when you look at that whole IP address, it's broken up into two parts. One part's the network address, and one part's the host address. Now, how do we know which part of the number is the host and the network address? Well, we have to use a thing called the subnet mask. In this subnet mask, you'll notice that I'm using an IP address of 192.168.15.3, but you don't know which part is the network address and which part is the host address. Well, you'll see a thing called a subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And what I want you to do is wherever you see the 255 stop and the zero take over for now. We have a lot more to talk about, but for now, if you'll draw an imaginary line where the subnet mask, the 255 stops and the zero takes over, this tells you that the network address for this particular computer is 192.168.15. And the house number, also the host number, just using the analogy of the street again, 
the house number, the host number is three. So by looking at an IP address and the subnet mask, it is my opinion that the subnet mask is way more important than the IP address. Now we have rules about subnet mask as well. So let me go ahead and switch it back over to the, to the whiteboard and we'll take a look at some other examples. In this example that I'm writing now, 179.85.9.62 are numbers that represent an IP address because they are between 0 and 255. Now let's go ahead and take a look and decide which part of the number is the network address and which part of the number is the host address. Well, we will not be able to tell that unless we have a subnet mask written. So I'm going to write a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. Now I changed the subnet mask that time, and you'll notice that where the 255 stop and the zero takes over, I'm going to draw a line. So let's see, I'm going to give you a minute to see if you can figure out which part of the number is the network address and which part of the number is the host address. Let me give you a moment. Okay, if you said that 179.85 is the network address and 9.62 is the host address, you would be correct because wherever the subnet mask stops with the 255 and takes over with the zeros at the end of it, draw a line straight down. Left hand side is the network address and the right hand side is the host address. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to look at my computer that I'm sitting at teaching off of right now and take a look at my IP address and my subnet mask and we'll talk more about it. Okay, I just opened up a command prompt on my computer and if you um, want to do this yourself, just hit your Windows key or touch your Windows key, you have to hit it, but <laughs> press your Windows key, type in CMD and you should see a choice called command prompt and open up your command prompt. Now, I changed my background to white and black letters so you can see it better. Now, yours is probably going to be a black background with white letters. You don't have to change the color to do what I'm doing. But the first thing I'm going to do is find out the name of my computer. I'm going to type in the word host name. So let me move my cursor there, and I'm going to type in host name. Now, host name has no space in it, just host name. And remember we talked about, we want to find out what the host name is of a computer and the host address is for a computer. So if you want to find out the real name of your computer, simply open up a command prompt, type in host name, press enter, and you'll notice the name of my machine is Black Beauty. Now I have a beautiful laptop and the color of the case is black and that's why I call her Black Beauty. I'm also going to be typing in IP config, which is the command you would type in to find out what your IP address is. It's IPCONFIG, IP config. I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to scroll up to my IP address. Now, you'll notice that I have an IP address of 192.168.10.246. That's my computer. You'll also notice that I have a subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And in, again, in my opinion, the subnet mask is more important everything's important, but more important than the IP address because without the subnet mask, I can look at this number and not be able to tell whether my network address is 192.168 and my host is 10. So let's take a look at mine, 255.255.255. So we'll draw or I'll just arrow through this spot right here and I'm looking at my network address is 192.168.10 and my host address on the computer tutors network, internal network, is 246. So now I know what my network address is and my host address. So when anybody says, let's go to Black Beauty, my computer is going to go to, or their computer is going to go to 192.168.10.246 because that's Black Beauty's house number on a street of 192.168.10. Okay, back to the example that we started with before we went over to my machine. This is the IP address, 192.168.15.3. Subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. 
the network address is this portion, and the host address, the street number, is this, and the house number is the three. So this is my host address. Let's take a look at another one. If the subnet mask for that same number, 192.168.15.3, was 255.255.00, then the network address would be 192.168 because we would have our line sitting right there, and the host number would be 15.3. What would happen if 255.0.0.0 was our subnet mask? Let me show you. Now the network address would be the 192, and the host address would be all three numbers. So if we were using the street analogy, you'd be on 192 Street, living at house 168.15.3. Of course, we're on the 192 network at a computer host 168.15.3.